Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. Such an honor to talk to you. The Charlotte Knights holding their strike out the stigma night on July 7th here at Truist Field. And you've been such an advocate for mental health awareness. You've come out and you've shared your story about your struggle with mental health and depression. And, you know, Steve, what originally inspired you to share your story with others? I just believe with everything going on with COVID, uh, that really just spiked um, mental health. We had an opportunity uh, with COVID to sit in our homes and not everybody handled that well. Uh, on the outside, uh, we adjusted, but on the inside, I believe people um, really struggle. And coming out of it, there was a process and a debrief um, that I believe people were struggling with. And so we felt uh, the numbers really showed that it was a need. And so it wasn't something that everybody's sitting around saying we know what other people need. I think, I believe we saw the numbers that show um, that it was needed and the participation shows. And so we, we've been on and uh, swinging away at, at, at mental health. How would you say that your life has changed since you decided to share your story? I don't believe it's changed. Uh, I think that's a great question. I don't believe it changes. It's made me more aware. Uh, may, it's made me think um, not just about myself, but also other people. And it makes the programs that a lot of people do, you, you can't not ear hustle. I like to use the word ear hustle. Ear hustle and when you hear, you know, we talk to kids and ask all the time, how do you feel? Well, how many adults have you really asked and sit and listen to of how, how do you feel? And I believe based on those questions, um, we get a lot of different answers and those answers are important to, to listen and, and take forward. You haven't just talked about it. You've put your words into actions. You opened the Smith Family Behavioral Health Urgent Care Facility this year in Charlotte. Steve, when did that idea come up? to build that? Uh, two, about two and a half years ago, uh, kind of in coming out of COVID when the numbers uh, were showing we were 18 months into COVID and we had 1900 clinical hours just dedicated to counseling services in person or via Zoom. And so far since we've opened up the behavioral health uh, facility, uh, March 20th, I believe, We've had, uh, we've seen 187 patients. We have served 160 of those patients. Have We have diverted them away from the emergency room. So that in itself says in a short amount of time, how much is needed. And that allows people in the emergency room to breathe a little bit. They can actually take a break because they're not inundated with the extra workload that they already have. The emergency room is a place for emergency. And I'm not saying mental health is not an emergency, it is. A mental health is not a place to be addressed in the emergency room. We felt that a, a behavioral health place would be a place where it's a standalone, to have an opportunity to discuss and to work through the process of getting started with mental health and mental health is a wide range of adolescent all the way to elderly as well. So we serve from ages, I believe, as young as four, all the way up to whatever age you are dealing with it. Um, and so we try to make sure we, we, we hit every age. Just incredible. And you know, you talked about it there, just how much it's impacted people's lives and you've impacted so many people's lives because you've come out and you have shared your story with others. You're the Carolina Panthers all time leading receiver, but you told everybody that at one point in your life, you weren't okay. And that's not easy to do for somebody who might be struggling, Steve, and they maybe don't want to say anything about how they're feeling. What would your message be to them? Well, I understand that you don't want to say. I understand that you may not feel safe. Uh, also understand that there is a process. And I think people have also been pushed aside and told how you feel is, is not real. And it is. It's okay how you feel. And, and, and people around them need to make them feel that it's okay 
to share how they feel, to share what they're experiencing and not shame them for what expressing what they're experiencing, um, sometimes around you. That's such an important message to share. And, you know, we are so honored to be able to continue to spread awareness surrounding mental health with our Strikeout the Stigma Night on July 7th. Steve, how important is it for nights like this to be held within the sports community? I think it's excellent. I think it's needed. You never want to say is, you know, it's about time. It's never too late. I believe it's just it's, it's the tipping point that we all know that we need. And then you have athletes and people who have so many athletic gifts to also say that they have a process or the process that in which they they're doing need they need some refining. It's just it's a great opportunity and it's a great um, it's a great time that Charlotte is a community based city. And so for the sh for the Knights to be able to do that, I think it just puts a stamp of approval that we're not just saying it with our words, but we're following up with our actions. Steve, can't thank you enough for your time. Such an honor to talk to you. And we're extremely grateful for all that you have done surrounding the conversation of mental health and mental health awareness. And we appreciate you taking the time today. Well, I'm honored to be here and thank you.